Hey there thinkers, welcome back to Critical Hit. My name is Est, and it looks like once again, the United Nations is pressuring Japan to make significant changes to certain domestic policies, which is marking at least the second known instance of this type of intervention. The UN's latest concern stems from Japan's apparent disregard for recommendations made in a prior report. So as noted in coverage by Niche Gamer, which I'll be diving into detail. For those of you who don't know, the UN's previous report highlighted key areas where Japan's policies were considered problematic by international standards, likely addressing issues like human rights, privacy, or cultural practices that differ from typical Western norms. However, based on recent observations, it seems Japan either overlooked or just didn't fully implement the changes suggested by the UN. This recent push indicates a renewed urgency from the UN for Japan to align with broader global expectations. However, I have a few things to say here, but before I do, we have a small request. If you are new here, consider hitting the subscribe button, smashing that like, and ring the bell to be notified for our next video. We would greatly appreciate this, since this will help us appease those YouTube algorithm gods. So, we thank you. Now let me give you our thoughts on this, and now let's jump into an article from the Ashahi Simbun, saying that the UN to urge Japan to end discrimination against women. Now, once again, people from outside Japan are stepping in telling Japan how they need to operate, which has sparked a lot of reactions. Like take for instance the recent report titled UN to urge Japan to end discrimination against women. Yeah, at first glance, this sounds like an unquestionably positive step. So who wouldn't want to end discrimination against women? But the report goes beyond addressing basic rights and equality. It delves into contentious areas for Japan, censorship. Specifically, the report suggests increased regulation on anime, video games, and manga, calling for Japan to curb certain elements in their art and media that are deemed problematic. Now, this recommendation hits a nerve, particularly with politicians like Yamato Toro, who has become something of a defender of Japan's cultural expression in these areas. So, Toro rose to that position largely by tapping into Japan's deep-rooted love for anime, manga, and video games almost embodying the spirit of a weeb himself. His political platform has emphasized preserving the integrity of Japan's art forms, resisting external pressures for censorship, and maintaining Japan's autonomy over its cultural content. This stance resonated deeply with the public, especially with the younger generations and fans of Japanese media who see these forms of expression as part of their national identity. This isn't just an isolated incident either. Like, we've been seeing a steady increase in corporations yielding to Western standards of censorship, especially in the entertainment sectors like video games. So major franchises and studios have adapted their content to appease a wider and often more conservative international audience, which is resulting in alterations that sometimes do water down the original artistic vision. This has been a sore spot for fans who feel that these changes don't just compromise the story or visuals, but also create a disconnect from the original cultural context. So the United Nations did hold that meeting, and as expected, they brought up significant criticisms. The main concern stems from Japan's apparent dismissal of their previous recommendations, and the UN committee specifically called out Japanese media, suggesting that certain portrayals could incite violence against women and girls. And this perspective seems really extreme implying that audiences, particularly anime fans, might be inspired to violence simply by consuming fictional media? It's an oversimplification of a complex cultural issue, but it does highlight the growing friction between local content and global scrutiny. Recently, we have even seen this play out in the gaming industry, with many games toned down or altered to avoid offending certain sensibilities. Like, this trend has sparked debates on whether the industry is sacrificing creative freedoms to meet global standards or if there's room for compromise. The broader question remains, where do we draw the line between cultural sensitivity and artistic expression? The irony of this whole situation is that you have these very vocal critics, often from Western liberal circles, who denounce the West as a force of colonialism. Yet here they are, ironically trying to push their own values onto Japan, effectively demanding that Japanese creators adjust their content to meet Western standards of sensitivity and inclusivity. Like, this approach reflects a sort of cultural entitlement that disregards the autonomy of 
Japanese creators to explore diverse themes and express their culture in ways that resonate with them and their audience. What is also notable is that Japan already offers some of the most diverse content globally, especially in its manga and anime industries. Like, there's a whole spectrum of genres and themes catering to different identities and interests, whether it's LGBTQ, romance, horror, slice of life, or even fantasy. Like, the variety is immense. In fact, genres like Yuri and Yao, I think, which I'm sure depicts lesbian and gay relationships, like these are mainstream. Like they can be found in bookstores across Japan. Like they aren't niche or underground. They are widely available and have an established audience, proving that Japan already accommodates diverse narratives in a way that doesn't need to conform to Western ideals of representation. So, for Western critics to pressure Japan into adjusting its content feels kind of like a contradiction. It's almost they're just ignoring the fact that diversity is already present in Japan's media and instead they're attempting to override it with their own standards. This imposition not only disregards the cultural differences, but also overlooks the fact that Japan has its own values and priorities. Japanese media creators should feel free to tell stories from their own perspectives without being compelled to fit into a mold that caters primarily to Western sensibilities. So, the critique here is that organizations like the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women the CEDAW, seem overly focused on scrutinizing fictional portrayals, particularly anime and video game content, which is kind of weird, rather than actually addressing real-world issues affecting women's rights and freedoms. The speaker's point is that spending resources on regulating or censoring these sexy anime characters is something that's purely fictional and preferred by a big segment of the audience, including many women just seems a little misplaced when there are far more critical real-life issues that need urgent attention. Like, I feel a frustration in this argument, one that questions why resources are spent targeting media content, especially since the depiction of characters in anime is a cultural expression that, for many, represent harmless escapism. So, the speaker highlights how women, according to studies, often enjoy playing characters who fit certain stylistic or aesthetic roles, including sexy portrayals which challenges the notion that these designs are inherently problematic. The argument could also reflect concern over cultural imposition, as anime and video game character designs from Japan have a particular portrayal that is quite different from Western sensibilities. When pressing issues such as gender inequality in certain regions where women do lack fundamental rights, like education or freedom of movement, remain unsolved, Focusing on fictional portrayals seems like a misallocation of both attention and resources. The speaker expresses that the opinion that these priorities should be realigned to tackle tangible injustices that impact lives directly rather than patrolling fictional content. This whole situation is a classic case of cultural misunderstanding mixed with a hefty dose of control freakery. Like this, it's no secret that anime and video games are cash cows, raking in billions and dominating global pop culture. So, what do the outside forces like the CEDAW, the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women do? They throw up their hands and say, oh no, think of the children. It's as if watching Death Note will suddenly turn someone into a violent misogynist because clearly that's how the media works, right? You would think that Yamato Toro, the free speech advocate and politician, might as well be waving a red flag in front of a bull when he talks about the Japanese Cabinet Office Gender Equality Bureau and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, confirming that their meetings with CEDAW, sure, they acknowledge the concerns, but nothing concrete has come of it. Just more talk about how Japanese media might need a makeover to fit into Western ideals. It really seems like they think Japan should just take a crash course in political correctness and abandon its unique storytelling style to align with a one-size-fits-all Western narrative. But let's face it here, if people really thought that watching anime would make them go out and start slapping women around, we'd have a lot more issues to deal with than some spicy plot lines. Like, 
In the end, it really feels like an attempt to regulate creativity and make it safe and acceptable for Western audiences. Because obviously we can't have anything that deviates from their cookie cutter vision of media. So please keep your hands off Japanese culture. It's doing just fine on its own. Isn't it just delightful that the Japanese government has taken its sweet time responding to external pressures on the media censorship? Well, meanwhile, Japanese corporations are practically tripping over themselves to embrace DEI initiatives, like they're handing out candy at a parade. It's almost kind of sad to watch. But hey, at least free speech is still a thing over there, at least on paper, thanks to their laws. So thank goodness for the brave souls fighting the good fight. Like they're the only ones ensuring that Japan keeps churning out some of the most incredible content out there. With minimal interference, like Japanese creators can tell the stories that they want, unfiltered by the moral gatekeepers with their ever expanding of do's and don'ts. It's no wonder we're getting some of the best stories from Japan these days. Sure, the balance used to be a little bit more level, but honestly, it really feels like anime has taken the crown. It's really like Japan is saying, you want creativity? Well, here's a whole new world where we get to do what we want. And I, for one, am here for it. And so get this, here's his oh so eloquent statement. And I shared his post earlier. I mean, like, who wouldn't want to be front row seats to this drama, right? On October 29th, the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Honestly, try saying that five times fast. So he dropped its concluding observations on Japan's ninth periodic report. You know, the one that followed the riveting face-to-face -face review on October 17th, because apparently reviewing discrimination requires an audience. Now hold on to your panties, people, because here is the juicy bit from Yamato's social media rant. In his oh-so-final opinion, they expressed concerns. Shocking, right? That pornography, video games, manga, and other animated delights might just maybe incite violence against women and girls based on gender or sexual orientation. Because clearly, video games and hentai are to blame for all of society's ills. Come on. Now, as for Japan's rules on this, I mean, like, seriously, their regulations are already tighter than a pair of skinny jeans at a Thanksgiving dinner. So unless things have magically changed overnight, and let's face it, they rarely do, Japan has had plenty of rules and regulations to keep this stuff in check. Are they going to blame anime for world hunger too? Because that sounds about as logical as this entire conversation. How noble of the committee to recommend effectively implementing existing legal measures because nothing screams progress quite like slapping a band-aid on a gaping wound. They're all in this tizzy about video games and animation that supposedly reinforces those pesky discriminatory gender stereotypes and violence against women and girls. But wait, despite all this worry and concern, during their oh-so-enlightened face-to-face screening, they couldn't be bothered to ask about the actual content of manga, anime, or games? I mean, come on, that's a classic move. Instead, they just wave their hands and express their concerns like that's somehow a solution. Like, bravo committee, you've truly mastered the art of concern without action. The one-sided approach is so laughable, it's like denying a painter the right to use certain colors because, like, heaven forbid, they might make a masterpiece that challenges the status quo. Like, let's just throw a legal net over all these art forms and monitor them like they're potential criminals. Instead of celebrating their creative expression. The UN is trying to keep Japan under its thumb like a pesky little sibling. Who needs creative freedom when you can just have good old censorship instead, right? It's like watching a train wreck in slow motion. Sure, it's definitely terrible, but you just can't look away. And while, while we're here crossing our fingers, hoping that brave souls step up to battle against this madness, Let's remind ourselves that we've been seeing this time and time again, corporations are already bending the knee one by one to woke culture. So however, those are my thoughts on this. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And hey, before you go, subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, and ring the bell to be notified for our next video. As always, this is Est, and I'm signing off now. So I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!